forearm rotation. Don't do it. What are you talking about? You need forearm rotation and I'm gonna tell you exactly why. A warm welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about forearm rotation. Now forearm rotation is heavily linked in a golfer's mind that rotation is trying to square the club face. Well, the club face to square up has a few influences on it. Number one, the grip. Number two, the forearm rotation. And number three, the shape of the wrist. The first, the grip, as we know, and you'll hear me waffle on about the grip, depending on where your hands are on the hold, it'll either make the face more open or the face more closed. The forearm rotation, we're gonna talk about that today, but the wrist angle, depending on whether I make my left wrist cupped or my left wrist bowed, will affect the orientation of the face. The third element is the forearm rotation, and I think this has been confused quite strongly with the shift of face orientation with hands, let's say. So when I make a backswing and I have this forearm rotation going on, it's affecting the pitch of the shaft. If I was to hold the, the, the club shaft on this angle and I was to change my wrist angle, can you see how it doesn't change the pitch of the shaft? If I move my hands around the golf club, it doesn't change the pitch of the shaft. But the minute I change the orientation of my forearms, it immediately changes the pitch of the shaft. And this lesson today, or this session today, was really brought on by a couple of lovely clients I've been working with, uh, Phil Blackmore and Jason Riley. I saw both of, them, both of them yesterday, and both battling with the driver a little, little uh, trying to uh, get the ball moving right to left in the sky, trying to draw it. They both come from weak club faces, hitting down too much, popping it out to the right, and everything with their irons and their hybrid, everything's drawing. Now, when we are thinking about driver, and particularly trying to make the ball fade, when, or stopping it from fading, should I say. When the ball is further forwards in our stance, and let me grab a driver, just like that. When we have the golf ball further forwards in our stance, because we are meet, meeting the golf ball later in our swing, if the club shaft was starting to go from this pitch to this pitch, and I'll talk about that more in a moment, as the club shaft starts to lay down this side of the golf swing, the ball inevitably will feel like it's going to go some form of left. If the club shaft stands up on exit, it's going to go some form of right. To balance out a shaft pitch through strike, to make the ball go dead straight, it's a really, really hard thing to do if you're battling the right. So if you're battling the right, we just want you to see bend left. If you've got the grip right, and you've got some decent shape in your wrist angles, which I never think needs to be coerced too heavily. The next area that you need to focus on is the pitch of the shaft. When we set up the pitch of this club shaft, which for my money is orientated at 90 to the spine, when we make a backswing, having that shaft pitch at 90 to the spine that you can see here, and then pitch at 90 to the spine here, will really start to make the handle track that's underneath you start to arc in to in. The minute the club shaft after strike 
starts to stand up and argue with the pitch that we're looking for, i.e. the shaft stands to get too vertical, it really starts to offer the golf ball out to the right. I'm going to go back to the six iron. Understanding that just because I'm asking a golfer to lay the shaft down here doesn't mean that I'm asking him to close the club face. When you look at the club face, I can have the shaft pitch the same. I could have an open club face and I could have a closed club face but the shaft pitch is exactly the same. So there's been some real prevalence in this desire to make golfers finish their golf swing with the Tommy Fleetwood finish. And really that's come about, A, from Tommy, but B, from the handle track, starting to work more in and around, but also the prevalence of making the the grip and the wrist angle very bowed at the top. Very bowed at the top makes the face very shut through strike. And so therefore, having this Tommy Fleetwood finish, you can see now offset the wrist angle that I just created, the environment I just created coming into the golf ball. For, for my money, it's a lovely sensation feeling like the shaft is held off, is held off and pointing to the right to hit the ball a bit straighter. But I believe that there is a much freer sensation that if you allow that club shaft to start to reflect the pitch the shaft is orientated to the spine, I think the feeling that the shaft being on the perpendicular at 90 to your spine coming into the golf ball and 90 to your spine coming out the other side will give you a much freer, nicer sensation to hit draws. Because the minute that club shaft feels like it can lay down on this side of the circle as opposed to trying to be all a bit fleetwood about it I think you really start to get a little bit more head speed down at the bottom you get more swing down at the bottom but depending on your delivery will will either inspire or reframe you from allowing that shaft to lay down on the other side. So when we now have the shaft pitching better both sides, because the forearm rotation is fundamentally starting to lay down on the way through, this left shoulder really starts to sit down and doesn't drive up and out. So for all those guys and girls out there trying to lay the shaft down, at this point, you've made your job so difficult trying to allow the shaft to lay down over the other side, you'll invariably hit it, continually hit it right. And again, if you think that the remedy to hitting it right is to change the path line, as I say, that's a failing. Whoever's instructing you on that is, is, is failing quite frankly. The pitch either side of the circle of the shaft is hugely important. So how do I change that Stuart? What drill could I do to give me a sensation on pitch of shaft? I want to first of all just talk about the arm lift in a golf swing because the arm lift in a golf swing will affect the pitch of the shaft. When we set up to the golf ball, our arm lift goes from address, and our arm lift invariably, the hand invariably gets very, again, these are approximations, not approximations, these are sweeping statements. If you took 150 tour players, 
you would see the lion's share of golfers in this spot. The hand would be at the height of the right shoulder, the pivot point of the arm. So we get arm lift from start to shoulder height, invariably in a golf swing. And that gap, when we come back down, has to be replaced in the time it takes my body to rotate. So as I lift my arms up, I lift them up to the height of my shoulder. Then what we see is a club shaft that lays down. And then what we see is we see a club shaft laid down on the way through. Now that, when I've got my arms up in front of me, I've got them at the arm lift phase, top of backswing. So if I lift my arms up, I lay the shaft down and I rotate, that's an approximation of where we'd like to see the club. And so in the same amount, we lift the club shaft up, we lay it down, I'm gonna say parallel to the floor for ease, and then you're gonna make a through swing and keep the club head at the same height. And now we're gonna to start to see how the club shaft would feel and lay down on the way through. Remember, I can still have an open face or closed face. I'm not talking about rolling of the, the, the uh, club face. I'm talking about the simple rotation of the forearms that has to be, that absolutely must be in play in a golf swing when you're dealing with a weighted implement that in a backswing is going to fall behind the handle and in a through swing is going to fall behind the handle. One falls back on the way back, one falls back on the way through. So if your forearms are not accepting of that motion, you're really gonna battle with making the face line up through strike. In conjunction with wrist angles and good grips. If you're standing there with a bad grip and poor wrist angles, you might struggle, but it, it still might help you. So that little drill where we get you standing up, laying the shaft down, making a through swing, and then we make a swing, and then I make you feel the same sensation on the other side, will start to make your golf ball have some pretty decent bend. Hopefully that's given you some insight into what goes into forearm rotation in a golf swing and how it will change the way this club shaft balances for the better. I think you'll find that's good coaching, my friends. Do hit the like button, do share and subscribe while you're here, and I look forward to seeing you next time.